Hi guy, in this video we reviews the 5 best smart TV for 2024, top picks from Samsung, Sony, LG and more. We've tested some of the best smart TVs on the market and here are our favorite picks. All new 4K TVs have a smart platform that includes features and apps. Some manufacturers choose to use proprietary platforms, while others prefer to integrate third-party options like Google TV, Android, or Roku. No matter the case, the selection of apps is great, as most common streaming apps are available on almost all platforms. All smart platforms offer similar features, and choosing one over another depends on personal preference and how you feel while using it. You shouldn't get a TV only based on its smart platform either, as you still want something with good picture quality. The TCL 6 Series Roku TV sits at the top of our list of best TVs and smart TVs for a number of reasons. It offers superb picture quality and affordable price tag in Roku, the best smart TV system. It also includes gaming features like 4K 120Hz input and variable refresh rate that can get the most out of consoles like the PS5 and Xbox Series X. When a friend asks me what TV to buy from 55 to 85 inches and money is still an object, I tell them to get the TCL 6 series. There are plenty of other excellent choices out there, however, so even though the 6 series is my current favorite for most people, it might not be right for your preferences or budget. Number 1. Samsung 50-inch Class Crystal UHD 4K CU8000 Series Smart TV. The Samsung CU8000 is one of the entry-level models in Samsung's 2023 lineup, replacing the Samsung 8000 Australian dollars in North America. It's part of Samsung's Crystal UHD series of TVs, sitting above the Samsung CU7000-CU7000D and below Samsung's QLED lineup, starting with the Samsung Q60C CLED. It competes with other entry-level models like the Sony X80K-X80CK and LG UQ8000. It's a simple model that lacks features like variable refresh rate, VRR, and HDMI 2.1 support, except on its 85-inch screen size. It uses Samsung's Crystal Processor 4K, first introduced in 2020 and designed to provide powerful 4K upscaling. It runs a simplified version of Samsung's 2023 Tizen OS interface, which offers most of the features of more advanced models but with a reduced feature set meant to run smoothly on this entry-level TV. It comes with the same great remote as more expensive models, like the Samsung S95C, and it supports voice controls to make it easy to find your favorite content. The Samsung CU8000 is slightly worse than the Samsung 8000 Australian dollars. The CU8000 is better in a few areas, as it has a wider color gamut, better color volume, higher HDR brightness in game mode, and much better low-quality content smoothing. The 8000 Australian dollars, however, has much better reflection handling, better build quality, much better color accuracy both pre- and post-calibration, and is easier to calibrate. It also has much better black uniformity, but this can vary between units. The newer CU8000 does have an upgraded version of Tizen OS, which now supports multi-view on this TV. The LG UR8000 is much better than the Samsung CU8000. The LG has much better color accuracy, even after fully calibrating both. The LG also tracks the PQE OTF better, ensuring that HDR content displays at the brightness level intended by the content creator. Finally, although both models lack a local dimming feature to improve contrast, the native contrast of the LG is much higher, so dark scenes look better overall. Number 2. Sony 65-inch 4K Ultra HD TV X80K Series LED Smart Google TV. The Sony X80K is okay overall. It's a good TV for watching sports or TV shows in wide seating areas because it has a wide viewing angle and the image looks consistent from the sides. It also has decent reflection handling and SDR peak brightness, so it's fine for rooms with a few lights around. However, it isn't good for watching movies or for gaming in dark rooms because it has a low contrast ratio and lacks a local dimming feature. Its HDR performance is also subpar as it has a low HDR peak brightness. The X80K blends in rather than stands out with a dark gray color along the bottom of its frame. The other three sides are black and their edges angle in slightly. The stand consists of simple A-shaped legs splayed far to either side. Seen from the side, the X80K is substantially thicker than the Samsung Q60B, 2.83 versus 1 inch, which could be a consideration if you want as flush a wall mount as possible. I like Sony's simple remote. The keys are laid out in familiar fashion and the requisite shortcut buttons for YouTube, Netflix, Disney Plus and Prime Video are on board, and I appreciated the dedicated input key that some clickers lack. 
I could do without the number key and another dedicated to an over-the-air grid guide at the bottom, but some users might appreciate them. Gaming, playing Horizon Forbidden West, color was more realistic and accurate on the Sony, and similar to the TCL and LG, while the Samsung in every mode appeared more saturated and, well, game Y. Again the Samsung won for contrast in punch, handily, although to its credit the Sony revealed more details in the shadows, which is an advantage in dark games with enemies lurking in the shadows. The Sony lacked the comprehensive gaming stats display of the Samsung and both had similar, excellent, input lag, but overall I preferred the Samsung's punchier look. The TCL, meanwhile, combined a brighter image than either one with excellent shadow detail and, yes, colors as accurate and better looking than the Sony. Bright lighting, the Sony measured relatively dim, backing up my subjective impressions, and both it and the Samsung were less bright than the TCL and a less expensive Vizio, both equipped with local dimming. Below are my measurements in nits for select comparison TVs in their brightest and most accurate picture modes, using both standard dynamic range, SDR, and high dynamic range, HDR, test patterns. Number 3. LG 65 QNED 99 UPA, Alexa built-in QNED Mini LED Smart UHD Nanocell TV. The LG QNED 99 is good for most uses. It's very good for watching TV shows or sports in a bright room because it has fairly wide viewing angles, high peak brightness, and good reflection handling. It's good for darkroom viewing as the full array local dimming feature helps it display deep blacks, but there's blooming around bright objects. It's also great for gaming as it has a quick response time and low input lag, but it doesn't support FreeSync or GSINC. Also, HDR content doesn't look the best due to banding issues. The LG QNED 99 looks a lot like the LG QNED 90. It has a premium style with thin borders all around and sleek metal feet. It doesn't seem cheaply made at all and should look nice in any setup. The LG QNED 99 uses different feet compared to the LG Nano 99 8K 2020. They're metal and support the TV well. There's 2.44 inches of space between the table and the bottom of the IR receiver and 3.30 inches to the bottom of the screen, so most soundbars shouldn't block the view. The build quality is fantastic. It's very well built overall with premium materials as it's mainly made of metal. It's sturdy and the stand supports the screen well. There's a bit of wobble front to back, but it won't be a problem if you just leave your TV on a table. There's a bit of flex on the pack panel near the inputs and visa slots, but it's nothing of concern. The LG QNED 99 has a decent full array local dimming feature. It's an improvement from the LG Nano 99 8K 2020 because it has mini LED backlighting that lets it have greater control, and the 65 inch model has about 1200 zones. For an IPS panel, it improves the contrast and helps it display deep blacks, but it's not without its faults. It crushes blacks in scenes with small highlights like starfields to the point where you can't see details in really bright areas. There's blooming with larger bright objects, and often it bleeds into the black bars at the top and bottom of the screen, causing the blacks to look more gray. You also notice the blooming with subtitles, but it's more subtle than on the LG QNED 90. Unfortunately, uniformity isn't the best with local dimming either because the TV struggles to keep up with moving bright objects in dark scenes, causing the screen to look uneven. Objects don't transition between the zones very well in our test pattern as you see trails, but it's not as bad with real content. However, most of these issues with the local dimming are most noticeable when viewing from the side, and it's not as bad if you view it from directly in front. Number 4. Hisense 55-inch Class U8 Series, Mini LED Yield 4K UHD Google Smart TV. If you want something cheaper but aren't necessarily on a budget, consider the Hisense U8K. It's a clear step down from the LG C2 OLED regarding picture quality as it doesn't deliver the same perfect blacks, but it's still an impressive TV that outperforms any other option in its price range. The Hisense runs Google TV as its built-in smart interface, with many apps available to download through the Google Play Store, so you can find your favorite content. Google TV can take some time to learn, but once you do, it's easy to use, and navigating the menu feels smooth. It also supports hands-free voice control, which makes it easy to find your favorite content, as you can ask it to search the name of your show or open a specific streaming app without even picking up the remote. Regarding picture quality, it gets incredibly bright and has excellent reflection handling, so it can easily overcome blare in a bright room. Its image processing capabilities are also quite good, even if not near what the Sony can do. Unfortunately, it has a narrow viewing angle, so it isn't good for watching shows with a wide seating arrangement as the image degrades as you move off-center.
Number 5. TCL 65 inch 6 Series 4K UHD, Dolby Vision HDR QLED Roku Smart TV. For the last 5 years, the TCL 6 Series has been our favorite TV for the money, and the 2022 version, also known as the R655 Series, is no exception. This TV has an excellent image thanks to many LED tech and well implemented full array local dimming that helps it run circles around just about any other TV at this price. It improves upon the previous R635 series, with more gaming extras and a new center mount stand that you can elevate to make room for a soundbar, although the new 85-inch size has standard legs. And finally, the Roku TV operating system is our hands-down favorite. Note that in addition to the R635, which this TV replaces, other versions of the 6 series were released in 2021 and remain on sale. The R646 series uses the Google TV operating system, but otherwise has similar specifications to the R655 models reviewed here. The R648 series has 8K resolution and is significantly more expensive.